ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا <تصفيق> يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah wa khayru al-hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-amuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalalah Every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray, every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, one third of the month of this blessed month of Ramadan has passed us. But we still have in it many days to especially develop our relationship with the Quran because it is the key to our success. Allah, He said, شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفرقان. The month of Ramadan in which was revealed the Quran, a guidance for mankind. You don't need to look anywhere else. All the guidance you need is in this book and clear proofs for that guidance. Allah gave us proof and proof and proof that this was truly the, His words and His final message. Revealing miracles that we did not find about until recent times. And the criterion between right and wrong. What is right and what is wrong. Plainly spelled out in the Quran. Allah says, Allah says, what means we have not neglected anything from this book. We have not neglected anything from it. Every message, anything you need is found within it. ثم قال ونزلنا عليك الكتاب تبيانا لكل شيء and we have sent down the Quran this book to you as a explanation as an explanation for everything if anybody is reading the Quran or the Mus'haf or looking at their phone they need to put it away you are violating the rules of Jum'ah and your Jum'ah will not be accepted بارك الله فيكم Allah he gave us in this book what he says in the Hadd al Quran Yahdi Lil Latihiya Aqwam Uy Bashar al Mu'mina Al Ladina Yamun al Salihati and Nalahum Ajaran Kabira. Allah says what means verily this Quran it guides to that which is most just and what is most right and it gives glad tidings to the believers. The believers in the oneness of Allah, that our Lord, that God, the Almighty, He is one and has no partners with him, and in his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That those who work deeds of righteousness, that they shall have a great reward. This is the book, this Quran, the one we need to develop that relationship with. And let it be our closest companion. This is the book that Allah's Messenger ﷺ, he said, It is Kitab Allah, it is the book of Allah, huwa hadl Allah, it is the rope of Allah. And mamdud min as ila al-ard, it is outstretched from the heavens to the earth. If we were having, at the base of a volcano, and it was lava spewing from the top, about to burn the bottom of your feet. If the ground was just hot, if a flood was happening, and there was something above that dropped a rope to pull you up to save you from what punishment you may, might be about to fall into, wouldn't you grab onto that rope? 
This is the rope of Allah. It is the book of Allah. It's outstretched from the heavens to the earth. But there's not just one for one person. It's for anyone who wants it to grab onto it. This is why Allah said, وَاعْقَصُمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold tightly, cling firmly to the rope of Allah. It is the book of Allah. And do not become divided. In this command is to obey the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and follow his sunnah. If you hold on to those two things, this is ground zero. This is home base. Anything else is a division and a deviation from what is the haqq. فَأَبْشِرُوا So the Prophet وسلم, said, So give glad tidings. فَإِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ تَرَفُهُ بِيَدِ اللَّهِ وَتَرَفُهُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ فَتَمَسَّكُوا بِهِ So have glad tidings. One end of this book is in Allah's hand and the other end is in your hand. If you could see it, you would never let it go. But we are believers in Allah, that He exists. We worship Him even though we do not see Him. So be a firm, be a firm believer in this. One end of the Qur'an is in Allah's hand, the other is in your hand. So cling tightly to it. فَإِنَّكُمْ لَن تَهْلِكُوا وَلَن تَضِرُّوا بَعْدُهُ أَبَدًا Because if you do so, you will never be destroyed and you will not go astray. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, this Qur'an it is the book of Allah, the words of Allah, the speech of Allah that He spoke to Angel Jibreel, to Angel Gabriel, to bring down to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi over 23 years. قَالَ اللَّهِ ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ This Qur'an, this is the book of which there is no doubt, a guidance for those who are the muttaqun, a guidance for those who keep their duty to Allah. Fear Allah, fear His punishment, act in obedience and doing good deeds to put a, a barrier between themselves and the punishment of Allah. They keep their duty to Him, and they serve Allah and love Allah by performing all those good deeds for His pleasure. This is in the book, the book of which there is no doubt. قَالَ اللَّهِ إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرِ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ Allah says what means, Verily we, this is the royal we, some of the brothers and sisters, they ask this question, what does Allah mean when He says we? You see royalty, humans, saying this if they're in a position of being a king or a queen, and this only belongs to Allah. It is called the royal we, He's referring to Himself, because everything goes by His control. He is the King and the Lord of everything in the heavens and the earth. Verily we, it is we who we sent down the dhikr of this Qur'an, and it is surely we who will guard it from corruption. All these years, 1435 years after the hijrah, not one vowel, not one letter has changed. Allah promised this would be the final message to all of mankind. And He promised He would not let it become corrupted like the previous books did. So Allah has kept His promise and put that to the people. قَالَ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبُ Allah says what means those who believe in the oneness of Allah, who have tawheed, who worship none other than Him, and whose hearts find rest in the remembrance of Allah, verily in the remembrance of Allah do the hearts find rest. There's nothing else we need for comfort or consolement or help or aid other than this book. If only we knew it, if only we saw it, if only we believed in it, then you would see its miracles work and play out in your life. قَالَ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ أَعْرَضْ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً بَنْكَ وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى But Allah says, for whoever turns away from my remembrance, and one of the remembrances is greater than the Qur'an itself, whoever turns away from the remembrances, from my reminder, he doesn't believe in the Qur'an, nor does he act upon its orders. Verily, he will have a life of hardship. And verily, we shall cause him to be blind and raise him up blind on the day of resurrection. He will be blind on that day because he turned away from the Qur'an in this life. So on that day, don't plan to have any vision or any sight or any sense of direction. My brothers and sisters in Islam, the Qur'an is all you need. It is the guidance you're searching for. It is the comfort you are seeking. It is the peace and the happiness you are craving. It is the message you need to be successful in this life and content in this life and to be happy and successful in a state of peace and security in the hereafter. Allah gave us gems from His own words to help us, to cure our hearts, to inspire us in times of need, to give us patience and hope in times of hardship. So don't turn away from the remembrance of Allah, but embrace it. Don't turn away from the Qur'an, but love it. Don't turn away from the Qur'an, but memorize it, learn it, implement it, teach it, and you will find that it will lead you to only good things. Today, just listen and focus on a few of these ayat that Allah gave us 
inspirations to give us hope, to remind us of His greatness, to remind us of His mercy, to remind us of His majesty. Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah says, what means, and Allah will not punish them, O Muhammad while they're with you, nor will He punish them while they seek Allah's forgiveness. Mercy and compassion from the greatest attributes of Allah Azza wa Jal for the Muslims, for the world. We should take hope in this fact that when we sin, if we make dua and we supplicate to our Lord and we beg Him for forgiveness and we do constant good deeds, that He can forgive us. And it's not a far reach. Allah is capable of forgiving us without anyone dying for our sins. Allah is capable of forgiving us without any hardship coming to Him. Allah is capable of forgiving us and not punishing us for your sins or my sins or anybody else's sins. This ayah reminds us, hold on to knowledge, have this hope that you can always ask for Allah, you can always ask Allah for forgiveness and seek His mercy and sincerely repent to Him. Repent to Allah with a sincere repentance, have that regret. Beg Allah for forgiveness and thou not to repeat the sin. Allah says in the Quran, خَلَقَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ بِالْحَقِّ وَصَوَّرَكُمْ فَأَحْسَنَ صُورَكُمْ وَإِلَيْهِ الْمَصِيرِ Allah says what means, it is He, Allah who has created the heavens and the earth with truth. And He shaped you and made you good shapes and to Him is the final return. Allah has protected us in our own unique form. The best of modes, لَقَدَ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ Allah said that I have created mankind in the best of modes, in the best of forms. Allah has created us in this way. But we will ultimately be returning to our Creator. And He's not going to look at our good looks. He's not going to look at our, our wealth. وَلَكِنْ يَنْظُرُ إِلَىٰ قُلُوبِكُمْ وَأَعْمَالِكُمْ He's going to look at your hearts. What your hearts felt, what your hearts did. How your hearts guided you to make decisions. And He will look at the, your deeds. Were they good or were they bad? So let this ayah be a reminder of inspiration. Whenever you feel lost in life, your goal to worship Allah alone without partners. كَمَا قَالْ وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُونَ Allah said, <coughs> I did not create jinn or mankind except to worship me. This is the goal, that we worship Allah and we don't associate partners with Him. And for Him to allow our final destination to be Jannah. And He promised this, that if you meet him without associating partners with him, then he will not punish you for your sins, but rather forgive you and admit you into Jannah, into paradise. Another ayah of inspiration, Allah says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَقْرِجَةً وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِدْ وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغٌ, بالغ أَمْرِهِ قَدْ جَعْلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدْرًا Allah says what means, and whosoever fears Allah, keeps his duty to Allah, is cautious in the way he lives his or her life. Cautious to not get caught with sin and fall further and deeper into that sin. Whoever lives, whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to Him, He will make a way for him out of every difficulty. Any hardship, it's not too hard for Allah to guide you out of it. It's whether you're passing that test and whether you truly rely on Allah to guide you out of that hardship. And He will provide him for, for Him from sources He could never imagine. And whoever puts his trust in Allah, whoever trusts God Almighty, His Lord, then He will suffice Him, He will be enough for Him. This is Hasbi Allah. That beautiful phrase, that Allah is enough for me, Allah is sufficient for me, I don't need nobody else, I don't need nothing else. All I need is Allah and I have everything. All I have is Allah and I have everything. If you put your trust in Allah, He will suffice you. Verily, Allah will accomplish His purpose. Indeed, Allah has set a measure for all things. Ikhwani Akhwatif Allah, this ayah is a source of inspiration, of hope, if you feel alone in the world. If you feel like there's no getting out of what you're in. If you feel like your hardships are piling up with that motto, when it rains, it pours. This ayah should remind you that when you fear Allah, you keep your duty to Allah, you stay on your prayers, you fast, you pay your zakat, you give in charity, you do, do good to the people, from your neighbors, to the poor, to the orphan, to the needy, and to the likes of those who you're responsible for. If you do so, let this be a source of hope for you. 
If you feel alone in this world, that when you remember Allah and you fear Allah, and hasbi Allah becomes the motto, the phrase of which you live by, that Allah is enough for you. That if you want Allah, if you truly believe He is all you need, He will never leave you alone, He will never abandon you. You will have Him at your fingertips. Allah says, as another ayah of inspiration, as Allah says, <coughs> فَأَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ وَيَأْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِآيَاتِنَا يُؤْمِنُونَ وَرَحْمَتِي وَسَعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ عَفْوًا وَرَحْمَتِي وَسَعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَسَأَكْتُبُهَا لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ وَيَأْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ بِآيَاتِنَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says what means my mercy embraces all things my mercy encompasses all things كَتَبَ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ Allah, he, he wrote, He prescribed for Himself to be the most merciful. To even the corrupt one and the disbelieving one and the sinner. He wrote for Himself to have rahmah to all things, the entirely merciful. To all of His creation. He says in this ayah, what means my mercy embraces all things. That mercy I shall in vain ordain for those who are the muttaqoon, who have taqwa. Again, they're cautious in how they live their life. So they don't fall into sin and earn Allah's displeasure, only seeking His love, seeking His pleasure, seeking His guidance. That mercy I shall ordain, ordain for those who are the muttaqoon, and they pay their zakat, and those who believe in our ayat, they believe in our proofs and our evidences, our lessons. These are the ones that Allah has wrote for Himself to be merciful towards. Yet another verse, another ayah, reminding us of the mercy of Allah. This can help those who are fearful of not being forgiven. Never feel like Allah cannot forgive you. Allah is capable of all things. He's capable of forgiving the grandest of sinners, the worst of sinners, the worst of people. As long as they turn to Him in true repentance. The doors of tawbah, abwaab al-tawbah, maftuha da'ima. The doors of repentance are always open as long as the sun doesn't rise in that west. And as long as your soul is in your, in your throat ready to be extracted. Allah's mercy encompasses everything. It's boundless. It has no limit. Allah's mercy is greater and grander than we could ever possibly comprehend or imagine. So seek forgiveness from Him with sincerity and know His promise is true. He will forgive and have mercy on those who do not associate partners with him in worship. وَقَالَ اللَّهَ الْحَقَّ مَنْ رَبِّكْ فَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ And Allah says what means, this is the truth from your Lord, be not of those who doubt. Another ayah, to show that the world we live in is full of distractions, it's full of commotion, it's full of confusion, it's got tons of magnets pulling us from light into darkness, tons of magnets pulling us to sin and follow our desires and to follow our whims. This ayah reminds us that the one and only truth will always be from Allah. That if we give up those things He forbade for us, that was because He loved us. If we give up those things that are impermissible, that's because He cares that we don't harm ourselves in this life. That if we put our trust in Allah and know the only truth comes from Allah and believe truthfully in His oneness, that He alone is the only one worthy of worship, alone without partners, now Muhammad sallallahu can be worshipped or have, uh, make dua to. Nor Isa, nor Jesus alayhi salam, nor, uh, nor any other prophets or righteous people. That you only worship Allah and supplicate to Allah alone without partners. Then He will help you both in this life and the next life. Do not doubt it for a second. أَقُولُ خَالِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ وَلَكُمْ وَاللَّهِ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذَنُوبُكُمْ إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers in Islam and sisters in Islam In this month we're reminded because it's شهر رمضان شهر القرآن It is the month of Ramadan, it is the month of the Quran When those first ayat came down on our beloved messenger Muhammad in the cave of Hira an angel Jibreel came to bring him those first ayat, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Read in the name of your Lord who creates. Khalaq al-insana min alaq. He creates mankind from a clot of blood. Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram. Read in the name of your Lord and he is the most generous. Allam al-insana 
bil qalam he taught mankind by the pen allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam he taught mankind what they did not know when these ayat came down to our prophet sallallahu and over 23 years allah revealed what we now have in this mushaf in this quran it is the book of allah the words of allah the speech of allah the rope of allah the way we can save ourselves from this dunya that we are drowning in it's a lifeline if only we take it that way Look in this book, all these gems, all these pearls, these beautiful ayat, these beautiful verses, reminding us of the mercy of our Lord. Hope in Him. Hope even when we sin. Hope in His jannah. Hope for every kind of relief when we have difficulty. Look at some more ayat. Let us remind ourselves of these pearls and gems from it, although it is all the words of Allah, the speech of Allah, the perfection of Allah. Allah says, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت. Allah says what means Allah burdens not a person beyond his scope. Allah will not try you greater than what you can bear. You may think you can't bear it, but Allah has fuller knowledge, more complete knowledge of you than your own self. He gets reward for the good he, good he has earned and he will be punished for the evil that he has earned. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, when you're feeling overwhelmed with hardship, with calamities, with anxiety, with depression, with pain, with sorrow, with sadness, with trials, with afflictions, simply any obstacle in your life, it is important to remember this ayah, that Allah only tests those as much as they can specifically handle and overcome. Allah will only test you to that. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا أَحَبَّ اللَّهَ قَوْمًا إِبْتَلَاهُمْ If Allah loves a people, He tests them and He tries them. This is how the Muslim thinks, that these tests and trials and difficulties, they're going to be for a better end in paradise with our Lord, Azza wa Jal. So this is how you look at those hardships. Each hardship for you, you didn't choose. Your enemy didn't choose. Your other person in this dunya, other human, didn't choose. Allah chose it for you. It could not come to you if Allah did not want it to come to you. So the hardships, the calamities, the trials, the pain, the sorrow you're facing, Allah chose that to come to you, to test you, to see if you can be patient during those tests. They're there for you to overcome them with patience. وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Help yourselves with patience and with prayer. This should empower you for your sins to be wiped away. All of these hardships we com- complain about, they don't equal closely to the amount of sins that we've done in our lifetime. Yet with every hardship, Allah removes sins just because we're going through some difficulty. One that we probably deserve. This should empower us that Allah understands your strength more than you understand yourself and your own strength. Allah says in another ayah of inspiration, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَ For verily, so verily with every hardship, there is relief. Verily, with hardship, there is relief. One hardship, but there's always two reliefs. Before it and after it. This ayah, with every hardship in life, should remind us that with every hardship in life, there will always be relief from Allah as well. Remember, Allah gives and He takes. Allah gives and He takes. There are times of ease and there are times of difficulty. The best of planners is the one who created it this way. So we should accept it as He created it. So ask for what is best. Don't ask for what you want. And this is the epitome of uh, Salat al-Istakhara. In kunta ta'lamu anna hadha al-amr qayrun li fi dini wa ma'ashi wa wa'aqibata amri faqdiru mu li wa yassirhu wa yassirhu li thumma barak li fi. Oh Allah, if you know that this thing is good for me, with respect to my religion, with my life, the matters of all my affairs, then decree it for me and make it easy for me. Don't ask Allah for what you want. Ask Him for what is best for you. Because trials and difficulty, hardships and calamities might be better for you than some ease. And we've seen that people, when they have those hardships, they're connected to their Lord, they're calling upon Him. And when ease touches them, how soon do they forget Allah who who gave them everything and led them away from every hardship. Be mindful of this. Allah says, وَأَنْفِقُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَةِ وَأَحْسِنُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah says, what means, and spend in the cause of Allah, in ways of your zakat al-man, the mujahideen, those who need help, the poor and the needy. Spend in the cause of Allah. 
for anything that is the cause of Allah. In this ayah, it wasn't specific to zakat al nah. Spend in the way of Allah. Establish masajid. To establish schools. These aren't for our own benefit. To pat anyone, self, anyone to, to pat themselves on the back. This is for the tarbiyah of our, of our youth. Upon this deen. To give them a firm foothold and stronghold upon this deen. To the rope of Allah. To this book of Allah. And do not throw yourselves into destruction by not spending your wealth in the cause of Allah. This is the equation when we're holding back, when we're greedy, when we think twice about giving in Allah's cause. And do good, truly Allah loves the muhsineen. Another beautiful ayah from the Qur'an, reminding us to stay good and pure in our speech and our actions and strive towards being the best Muslims even when no one is looking. You know Allah sees you. And you know Allah knows what you're thinking. Allah has full knowledge of it. So give in those times and do good deeds. Remember our actions should be centered around having that clean heart. Why? Because يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَا لَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهُ بِقَدْمِ سَلِيمٌ Because Allah said on that day of resurrection, the day where you'll flee from your mother and your father, your brother, your sister, your spouse and your children. You'll throw them in a fire to save yourself. On that day, your wealth, your family, they ain't going to benefit you. Except for the person who comes to Allah with a good, pure heart. They come to Allah with that pure heart. So be of the good doers. Be of the muhsineen seeking Allah's pleasure. We need that school built. We're all complaining our kids, our kids, our kids. But we're not doing nothing. It's lip service. Because the masajid, they're not in as much as they need to be. They're in other schools. We need that school built. So remember this ayah. Spend in the cause of Allah. And do not throw yourself into destruction by not spending in the cause of Allah. And do good. Allah loves the good doers. Allah says, يَوْمَئِذٍ يَسْتُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيُرَوْ أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرٌ يَرَى So that day mankind will proceed in scattered groups that they may be shown their deeds. So whoever does an Adam's weight of good, he will see it or she will see it. And whoever does an Adam's weight of evil, they will see it. This ayah reminds us, even the smallest good deed, the smallest amount or minor insignificant act of goodness in your eyes will not go unnoticed by Allah. He is ready to reward you and to multiply your rewards, to encourage you to do good. Allah gave us this, this, this equation. Do good and He'll multiply it by 10 to 700 times. So do good, my dear brothers and sisters. فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الْأَعْمَالِ أَدْوَمُهُ وَإِنْقَلْ Even if it's little, the Prophet ﷺ said, the best of these are the ones that you do constantly or continuously, even if they're little. Never belittle a good deed. Because you will see it on the day of resurrection. The smallest of them, the Adam's weight, the minor's good deed that you don't even think is worth any weight, you will see it and it will be a reward for, for you, يوم القيامة. And the last ayah we will mention as an inspiration from the many. This is just a taste of what's in this Qur'an. If we only read it to learn it and to implement it and to let it drive into our hearts to control how we live our lives. Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِ الَّذِينَ أَصْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مَنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَخْرَ الْبَنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Allah says what means, say, O oh, ibadi, O oh, my slaves who have transgressed against themselves, who have committed evil deeds and sins. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله Despair not of the mercy of Allah. Allah is capable of forgiving everything. Never think you're too dirty when it comes to sin. Never think you've done so much that you're not able to be loved by Allah. Do not ever despair at the mercy of Allah. Verily Allah forgives all sins, except for shirk without a sincere repentance. From the other ayah we know, truly He is oft forgiving, most merciful. This is major inspiration for those who need that reminder of how great Allah's mercy and compassion and ability for forgiveness are. That Allah will always be there for us. So always repent. Always go back. Rush back for Allah to forgive you. Race to Him. Even when you've done the grandest of sins, Allah can and inshallah will forgive you. So my dear brothers and sisters, you don't have to look elsewhere. You don't need a translator. You don't need Allah physically in front of you. Remember, Allah will call out to the people who make it to Jannah, who make it to paradise. 
On the day where he brings them to a greater reward. Not just all this rivers flowing underneath and all this food and, and drink and these rivers of of honey and milk and wine and water that you've never tasted or will never come close to tasting in this life. None of that. He'll call you for the greatest gift the day you get to see His face. And what will be His call? Where are my servants and slaves who worship me without seeing me? This is the day of increase and reward. Those who worshiped Allah and served Allah, prayed to Allah, called upon Allah even though they did not see Him. You don't know, need to see Allah physically to know that you can have a relationship with Allah. And it is in this Qur'an. All you need is the Qur'an, the book of Allah, the speech of Allah, the rope of Allah. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يُزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَصَارًا Allah says what means, and we send down from the Qur'an that which is a healing and a mercy to those who believe in Tawheed. They believe in this Qur'an and they act upon it. And it increases the zalimun, the polytheists and the wrongdoers in nothing but loss. Memorize this Qur'an, read this Qur'an, learn this Qur'an, implement this Qur'an, teach this Qur'an. It will inspire you to know that it is all you need. You will realize it once you realize the messages that Allah gave all of humanity with this final message. Again, with its command is to follow the sunnah of the Prophet the Qur'an cannot be mentioned without the Sunnah. The Sunnah cannot be mentioned without the Qur'an. They go hand in hand. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, take value in this month. Take benefit this month. Praise Allah that we were allowed to see another Ramadan. But establish, if you haven't done so already. And if you have, continue and excel. But if you haven't done so, pick up that Qur'an. Every day, promise yourself you're going to read some portion of it. And read some tafsir of it. Because it will penetrate your heart. It will show. It doesn't matter how many times you read the Qur'an. It matters how far the Qur'an reaches into your heart. So that it changes you. And it affects you. And it can be seen in your actions and your deeds and your speech. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, a couple quick announcements. Due to the weather prediction, although Allah knows best, tomorrow, uh, it being raining, potentially thunderstorm, we're going to cancel the iftar. We had, alhamdulillah, close to 400 people last Saturday. And there's no way it could be accommodated inside. And we want to keep our masjid facility-wise clean and proper, a good place, a place of good smell, etc. So we can worship our Creator in that sense. So it will be, it's canceled. We will announce if we can add another one to one of the other weekends, possibly the following weekend, inshallah. So follow your WhatsApp messages. If you do not receive them, there's a QR code to be added to that list. You scan it, hit the link, and you'll be joined, you'll be officially joined. So you'll get all these announcements and messages. Tomorrow's thought is canceled, uh, inshallah, and may Allah accept it uh, from us. Um, secondarily, last week, between last week and this morning, we've raised, alhamdulillah, um, what's enough to cover 27 of those light bulbs. We still have about 93 to go. So we started off slow. We need that school. We need that school. Our children need that school. Again, we can all say we care, we care, we care. Put your money where your mouth is. That is the, that's the blunt truth. It's only going to happen if we give in the cause of Allah in this way and don't throw ourselves into destruction. Because we're choosing to favor other things than building that. And I'll tell you, that is a priority over Masajid, over even what's happening in Gaza, even now, especially because we can't even get a lot of that funding in. I walked into a high school men's bathroom and there was a female tampon machine. It, I thought I went into the wrong one. I went back and I checked the door and it said men's bathroom. And that's what's now hanging in the bathrooms of many of our children. If we wake up too late, the parade's going to pass by. And our kids may be along in that parade. And ourselves for that matter. Take the matter seriously. See what you can do. If you can't truly give that amount, call 10 people. Text 10 people. See what they can give. Every, everything they give, you get the reward for as well. قال رسول الله من سنة في الإسلام سنة حسنة فله أجرها وأجر من عمل بها من بعده. Whoever revives this sunnah calls people to do a good deed. Like giving in charity, they will get the reward of it and the reward of those who, all those who follow without taking away from their reward. 
It's only going to happen if we all take the responsibility on our shoulders. It can't be on mine or five other people or ten other people. Every one of us has to put that responsibility on our shoulders. And if we do so, we will complete it in no time. Allahumma khalil muslimin wa muslimat wa mu'minin wa mu'minat wa al-ahya wa minhum wa al-amwal wa al-innaka wa al-sami'a wa al-qalib wa al-mujib al-da'awad Ya muqallib al-qulub sadis qulubin ala deenik Ya muqallib al-qulub sadis qulubin ala deenik يا مقلب القلوب سدد قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء شهر رمضان اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء شهر رمضان اللهم اجعلنا من عتقاء شهر رمضان يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين وانصرنا على اعدائك وعداء الدين اللهم انصر اخواننا واخواتنا في فلسطين وفي كل مكان اللهم لا تسكروبهم وسهل امورهم وثبت اقدامهم وارحم موتاهم واشف مرضاهم وتقبل شهداءهم يا ارحم الراحمين سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين